I have some daffodils that are getting ready to burst open. So if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. I love containers. I love to container garden. I love to bring things out of bloom early. I love to have things in bloom late. So what we have here is we have our first official succession of bulbs here. Now, this is a pot of bulbs that I planted up in a YouTube short. And you guys, when I tell you they're sticking up, they're ready to start making their way to the top. But what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be working with these daffodils right here. But before we do that, I wanna to head to another area of my garden so we can start planting. Wait, I need one more thing before we go over there. So let me go grab those two things and I'll meet you in another area of the garden. Woo! First, I need to take, let me get this because honey, we potting this up today. We got some other plants to go with it too. Today is the day that we are going to be popping the trees inside of those containers. Now, if you guys just been following along with me, here's a skinny of what's going on. Over the fall, we were going from garden center to garden center, and we were looking for junipers in a poodle shape to go in those containers right there. We couldn't find any. So our good friends over at Monrovia gave us two evergreen spirals, Alberta spruce, of course. We used them in our holiday decor up against the front entryway. They were absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. Now we are going to be potting them up where this is going to be the place where they are going to be. Now, what I am going to do is the container is sitting up on bricks. So I'm going to take them down and that way they're going to be able to get the warmth from the ground. So if we have any freezes or anything like that, I am not going to be going in and tickling the roots right now because it is in the winter time, which the winter time is a good time to plant. But what I wanna do is I wanna just get them some extra insulation around the root ball. Then we'll go in and we'll get them a good water. And so let's go get them. Child, I am telling you, one, now let's go get two. Wait a minute, coming in. Hold on, here's the second one. Baby, now we plant. Okay, let's scoot this one over just for a short bit. I know y'all see my window box. Ain't it bumping? It's on board. It's on board.
we're done we are done so we have the trees planted up i kind of like the placement to where our curves are coming around opposite now they will be turned throughout the season in order to make sure they get sunlight from all four sides of the plant 360 around the plant but for right now that looks good we're going to provide them with a tremendous amount of water This is the container that we're going to be using for this arrangement here. I love this container. It's a concrete container. I do not. I was trying to see if I can think about where I got this container from. But it's evading me at this time. So I don't know where I got the container from, but this is what we're going to use for this arrangement. We're going to be using the daffodils here for this arrangement. Daffodils are getting ready to burst open. So one of the flowers that I like to use at the beginning of the year without fail is daffodils. We're also going to talk about how we're putting this container together. So the first thing we need to do is we want to get some soil inside of this container. Before I put my soil in here, I'm going to add a piece of screen. That way the soil does not come out of the drain hole and clog the drain hole up. The roots look really good on this one. A little bit too much soil, so we'll just take it out.
Okay, so now I just want to go around and make sure I have all of the roots tucked in. All right, now I want to come in with some Spanish moss around the bottom and also the crown of the container. I mean by the crown. So we're going to put a little bit inside here. Just so it can show through a little bit, but I still want the heather I still want that to come and look just extremely wild and invasive around the bottom here, but I want to accent with this beautiful color here. And I mean, I'm using a generous helping. You need to come around on this side here and add some more. Okay, so there, yes, that's exactly, and I will definitely give you all a close up of what this looks like. Okay. Ooh, sometimes it is so hard to get this Spanish moss out. Okay, there. Okay, let me see. All right, 360 and just a little bit more in the top around the back side here. So around this back side, do I need any more? Just a small little bit on the inside of the daffodils here. And this is what the inside of the container looks like. Absolutely perfect and gorgeous. Okay, so it is perfect. The components here, we came in, we used a daffodil here. The daffodils are just cracking bud here. And you can see where we have them in different stages of bud. This one is pretty much starting to show or is showing the petals of the flower here. So it's not going to be long before this one is out in bloom. Okay, and then you have the heather is coming around around the bottom. But in this application, the moss is going to be looked at as an additional plant. And I just love to use moss. And what it does is it pays respect to every single plant. It helps divide. It helps really accent the texture here because the color is a tan color. Had I used green, green would have been nice, but it would have blended in more. By me coming in with the Spanish moss, it is really making your eye follow down the color and actually see, okay, when you stop, you want to say, okay, what all is in this container here? And let me tuck this piece in right here. So when I've used my moss and applications like this, I'm very generous with my moss here. And I just love it. When you get done using your bulbs in your containers, and this goes for tulip bulbs, and it also goes for daffodils, but more so with the daffodils, the tulips. If you wanna do the tulips, you're not gonna have it as long in a container as you will a daffodil. Because the daffodil, as long as you come in and you snip this out in an appropriate amount of time, 
you pull this out, hang it somewhere dry and cool, and you just let that energy go right back down into the bulb, and then you come back in, you cut everything out, and then what you can do is you can take your daffodil, you can put it in netting, and just let it kind of hang, keep them dry in the dark place. You can check in on them every once in a while to make sure they're not molding up. But then the next season, you can go ahead and pop these up. But the point is, if you're going to do this, you want to make sure that you're not letting the flower dwindle out of bloom. Now I have some, like if I'm using a lot of tulips or a lot of daffodils in the display, I will go ahead and do it. But you technically can buy daffodils and tulips very inexpensive. So that way you're not using a lot of your budget. But if you are one that like to save things and like to reuse and reuse, you technically can reuse these. You also, once these die over, you can leave them in a the container or you can pull them out and then you can go ahead and use them in your landscape. For me, I'm very big on container arrangements. For me, I am very, very big on coming in and doing these applications now. This container is so gorgeous. It is so gorgeous. And one of the things that made me go with the yellow, now I could have very easily came in and I could have used the white flower. We've done that before over here. I could have come in and I could have used the pink flower. We've done that, but let's look beyond that and pull the colors out of the heather here. Let's get in close and let's look at this heather. Let's look at the color variations here. Focus. Okay, so if you look at this color here on the heather, you can see where it gives off a green tone, but it has a yellow hue to it. So therefore, we took those colors there, and then we used the colors of our foliage here, of foliage, depending on where you're from, how you say it, and we use that to pull out those yellow hues, those yellow undertones in this heather. Now, we could have very much came in and used the pink because the pink is more so the dominant color here, but we did not want to play off that colorway. We definitely wanted to use the yellow here in more like a chartreuse color. Like, can you see it here? Can you see that? It definitely pulls in. And so I'm very excited about how everything turned out. You can really see up close the texture here and the heather really just makes a statement all on its own. This angle right here, you can definitely see the yellow undertones a lot better. You can see the texture. Now, although pink is the dominant color, it's so cliche to go with a pink or a variation of pink or even white because I've done that before as forestated. But in order to stand out, going with the less dominant color pulls in more question. If you pull out the yellow in the chartreuse, then it makes sense to only use the daffodil.
Now that we finished breakfast, I wanna go in and start to take down my Christmas tree in this area. When it comes to taking down Christmas decorations, I like to go in and take them down as I have the time. And one thing for sure, as soon as I get done, I have a huge void because you're used to seeing, you know, different Christmas trees, different holiday arrangements, and it just can kind of really make your space feel empty. I just like to store all of my Christmas decorations inside of these plastic containers here. They're very inexpensive, very easy to find. A lot of mines are color coordinated for the Christmas kind of like colors. So I like to kind of keep whatever theme I was doing for that year. I like to try to keep things together. So when I need to locate them the next year, they're easy to find. I'm in here cleaning I might as well go ahead and take the blinds down and clean my windows that way more light can come through Now that I have the window box clean, I took down my Christmas tree, it never fails. Every time that happens, I always feel a void. I have to jump on a conference call, and then after the conference call, we're gonna pick right up with a fresh flower arrangement, and you all, can you see the trend that we're going with? Can you all see the color scheme? Because it's definitely gonna fall right into that. I already have some beautiful florals and I can't wait to show them to you, show you what they're gonna look like and I can't wait for us to grab the container that these beautiful fresh flowers are gonna be going in. And FYI, I was a little bit nervous up there on that step stool because all I kept remembering is just having visions of it's the bird, I mean the bird. Like, I'm like, oh my God, do not come out of there because there is a nest inside of this one right here. And that's why the bird is so territorial. So anytime I come out here, I'm kind of like making loud noise before I get to the window because I'm like, hey, I'm coming in my area, which I know you've claimed that, but that bird is territorial and is also comfortable. I was sitting out here the other day taking tea and it actually just flew right on the table, walked around for a little bit, and I said, OMG, let me grab my camera. 
And as soon as I moved, like made a sudden movement, it was out of there. But I'm telling you, honey, I think they think they part of the family, like they Penelope or Pegasus or somebody. The temperatures have dropped drastically. It looks a mess because I have a blanket of leaves covering the patio here. So I wanna get all of the leaves up. Some of you all may be thinking it is December. So why do you still have leaves on the ground? And the answer is simple. My trees held onto their leaves longer. And then I have a neighbor who has some large oak trees. They hang onto their leaves and they kind of blow away as they just come off the tree. So for me and my schedule, it's best for me to come out and get the leaves all at once. And that's kind of the thing with gardening. You wanna make sure that you're meeting your task with your schedule and that's just what I have to do. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna get this up. I am gonna pull out the throw pillows over here on this area. You know, get everything just kind of just nestled and bundled up for the winter time. See how much of this we can get done. are off the patio it looks great the only thing I have left to do is just move the furniture back in its place and then we'll move on because I have some beautiful spring blooming bulbs that I know you'll want to see gorgeous and I think okay so normally when I'm out here, I normally have my sofa right here, my love seat on this side, but I think I kind of want to move it around a little bit. Let's just look at it and see how it'll look. I've already put the first chair right here. I, think I need to scoot it up a little bit. No, I like it, but then I don't like it. Huh, let me see. Maybe if I move this forward a little bit and I can bring this one forward right here. Set this one right here.
Show you all what everything looks like now that I've moved everything around. Love seed in this area here. Then I put the table right here in the middle where it was at, of course. And then I put the two love seeds over here on this side. Now, the patio is pretty much cleaned out. We do have some weeds here that were surviving up underneath the canopy of the leaves. So the leaves were able to add insulation, keep them warm, and so that's why they were surviving. So everything, for the most part, is pretty much cleaned out. Do you guys see? Look at the bird, y'all. See, now that is what tore up my evergreens. Can you guys see that? Okay, so let me walk up close to see if it comes out. See how it's moving that tree, baby? It's getting down into this house. I mean, it is getting down in there. Did y'all see it? it? It's a whole family in there. Now they sitting up on the roof line right there looking down to see if I'm coming near their house. And that is exactly why I come out here with that helmet on. I know y'all think I'm just cutting up. I love to cut up, but it's a reason why I'm doing that. Baby, they looking. Okay, one of, them, one of them flew off. Let me see if I can get the camera. Nope, gone. And that's exactly why I be having that little helmet on because it's a whole entire nest inside of this one right here. And if you can see, the brown material that's where they have broken one of the branches but anyways and i can already tell this table being right here is not gonna work because i done bumped my leg on it about three times so i'll probably swap this out we're not going to do it today what we're going to do is i'm going to run in we're going to grab some containers and we're going to grab some more flowers because we have two more projects that we're going to get done today Hopefully we can get them all done today. You guys, look at these beautiful daffodils. Now let's go grab the container. I want to grab this container right here. Can you guys see this? I think this container right here will be absolutely perfect for what we need it for. Let's go grab the next one. This pot right here, I think would be great. So I think we'll grab that out. So we are going to do an arrangement with both of these containers. Now, the reason why I picked these containers is because they are going to complement what we already have going for the area that these containers will be at. So if you look close for this container, it has the same shape of this concrete urn right here. It has the antiquing around the bottom of it, which I so love. It also has the petals here. I mean, it's a beautiful example of a Florida Lee container. You guys see how it has the ribbing. It has ribbing right here, ribbing right here. And both of them have like a total antique vibe going on. And even right here on the container, you can definitely see the detailing that both of these have, just absolutely gorgeous. We are going to come in and we are going to do the first installation of the rest of the containers that's gonna be part of this collection right here. We need a little bit of soil, even though we have a mini urn, we have a mini scooper. We'll put this inside of here because we won't need much. And then we'll grab out our first daffodil
All right, now we'll start on the next one. You guys, isn't that cute and angelic? We'll just start popping these daffodils in here one by one. I mean, and these roots are really loving, loving their life right now. daffodil so let me go grab that out of my stash gotta run to the plant room real quick okay so for this one right here we're going to just pop this right in this container but I am trying to move a little bit of the soil away so I'll break that up and I'll show you and explain to you why in just a second Okay, now the excess soil, I am going to put back in here. So let me scoop it up. We want to scoop all of this soil up and then we'll come right back and just add it into the container. Okay, turn this a little bit right here. Then we'll add a little bit more. So let me show you the depth that we're filling in this container at right here it's going in and filling in like crevices like right here on the container and then if you look down on the inside you can see where i have some roots exposed can you see that right here in this area we're going to fill that in and then right over here on this side we're also going to fill that we'll in put a little bit of soil on the inside of this container it's not going to take much All right, now I do want to accent the fact that we have spring bulbs out early. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to start to take my brush and slightly just remove a little bit of the soil because this is a little bit of a brag here for us that we have these bulbs out on our tables this early in the season. We're going to show off the architecture of the bulb and we're going to use a little bit of that in our arrangement so i'm just slightly going in and i am just clearing away a little bit of the soil off of the bulb and it doesn't take much you want to be very gentle when you do this part right here if you get to a section and you cannot remove the soil you can pick the bulb up you can dip it in a little bit of water i tend to just if it's if it's soil on there that won't come off i just kind of just let it stay but if you really want to showcase your bulb then what you want to do is just rinse it off and that's perfectly fine to do such we want to kind of expose some of our daffodil bulbs here. So I'm just kind of brushing those up. Not all of them, just some of them. In order to have cohesion with everything, we are coming back in with some Spanish moss. So again, you can find this big bag eight eight ninety nine so basically nine dollars at hobby lobby i like to go in and grab these i pick them up a few at a time that way i always have some type of moss on hand so for the spanish moss and the english moss i really love to keep those in stock We're 
just going to feed this around, but we're going to not use as much as we did with this arrangement right here, but we are going to use some and we're going to be very scarce in the area where we scrape back the soil from or brush back rather the soil from the bug. We're going to add a little bit around here. All right, now for this container right here, we are not going to expose the bulb, but we are going to come in and dress this up with a little bit of moss as well. A little bit of water. And when I water and I'm using moss, I like to go in and I like to water the moss as well. So we have this one watered in. Now we just have to water in these spring bulbs right here. things that you want to keep in mind if you are pulling back the soil away from your spring bulbs and you're going to be watering them in because once the flowers come into bloom you want to make sure you're not letting your bulbs dry out now you want to make sure that when you water these you are not directly watering your bulb because you don't want your bulb to rot you want to make sure that you use some of those same properties that you would use on the outside of your home. You want to bring those inside. One, you want to make sure you don't overwater them because you don't want the bulb to get all soggy boggy. You want to make sure you don't dry it out. You kind of want to keep it in a cool type room. You don't want to put it in a room that's too hot. Now, if you just have to have it in a room that you like to keep on the warmer side. So for me, it's certain rooms in my home that I love to keep very toasty or rooms that have a fireplace in it, you wanna make sure that if you have it in that room, it's not gonna last as long. So make sure you're keeping it watered. Kinda of wanna give it the same conditions that they'll have in the springtime. The outside of your home, you wanna continue that on the inside of your home as well. So for me, I definitely won't be placing any of this collection near my fireplace because I know the fireplace is gonna keep that area dry. It's gonna be warmer in that area. So this is not gonna be a good candidate for this collection to go. Now, I certainly know exactly where this collection is going in my home and I can't wait to share that with you. We are going to head and we're going to do a beautiful arrangement. And you guys, when you see the fresh flowers that I get, you are going to just say, hmm, yeah, that's different. And it's gonna be gorgeous. Come on, let's go get it together. First thing I do when I bring my arrangements home is I give them their first cut and then I put them in some fresh water. That helps condition, helps start to hydrate the flowers that I'm going to be working with. Now, I'm going to come in and just start arranging really quick. I'm 
I'm just going to pull these open. Let me turn this here for us. little bit shorter on that one okay so now when I use my kale I like to have everything positioned perfectly and then I just build up from there so now I'll go in with some white hydrangeas Okay, so now, and we'll start to come in, just take a little bit off. We'll start to fill these in where we have space. And maybe one more right here. Actually, do you see how these two hydrangeas are side by side? I'm going to move this one and I am going to put it, actually, I am going to keep it right there. Okay. So here's our arrangement. Now, when you work with this kale, you want to make sure you come in and you pull your pieces down and kind of give, open them up a little bit, give a little bit more insight to the inside of the kale. That's how you want to do that. You use hydrangeas in arrangement. Sometimes you might have to come back in that next day and rehydrate them so they can open up. And that way your arrangement will last for a very, very long time. There are sprays and things that you can use on your hydrangeas in order to help them last longer in the vase. But I'm super duper excited about how all of this turned out. And I absolutely love it. Very inexpensive to recreate.
I'm outside, minding my business, living my best garden life. Here comes the bird swooping on in. Do you see? It almost landed on my back. And if you missed it while I was planting up yesterday, let me give you an instant replay. You guys, you cannot make this stuff up. You cannot make it up. Like, this is what I go through in my garden. 